All right, everybody. So when you're six months in, what should you expect? Uh, it gets way easier when you're not drinking. Everything's better. I've been over this a hundred times. I'm not going to embark on that. But what I want to share with you is the amount of stress and what I'm dealing with in my personal life and why if you're in a situation where you don't think you can make it and you have a lot of stress, hear what I'm going through because I think you'll see that given everything that I'm dealing with and I can do it, anybody can do it. Now, I got a pretty good life. I worked really hard for everything I have. Made some missteps along the way. We'll get into that. But we're getting back on the right track. But it's very unsettling right now. And there's a lot up in the air. And it's really, really stressful. The great news is that rather than like before where all I could think about was wanting to go back and have a drink. All I'm thinking about now is thank God I don't drink. Seriously. Like just, yeah. I mean the occasional nostalgia for some port or some scotch. Like, yeah, I don't think that's ever going to go away. But I resign myself, at least at this point, that I don't think I have the capacity to go back and drink again. And then I look at it like, what's the point? But the takeaway is, I'm sitting there talking to my wife. And I'm like, thank God I'm not drinking right now. Like, thank God I don't drink. Because I don't know how I'd be able to handle all this stress. So let me give you a quick breakdown. I don't want to get too personal, but I'll give you just an idea. I left the city a year and a half ago or so, because, or maybe longer now, probably two years ago. And bought this 40 acre parcel to live in and out in the middle of nowhere. Like I wanted to get my kids out in the middle of nowhere, enjoy nature, grow up in a wholesome environment. Wasn't the best scenario. There was a lot of obstacles that I tried to just ignore. And unfortunately the chickens come home to roost because when I went back to mediation this last time, even though I was originally told I can move within three hours and I should get the schedule I want, it's going to be an uphill battle to get summers and every other weekend even though I'm two hours and 45 minutes away from my son's school. So basically all my plans for my family are gone. And now I have to move back to the city. I mean, a two bedroom dump of an apartment. It's disgusting what they charge for these places. They're gross. I mean, just awful, awful apartment. Um, nice area, but the finishes, the work, it's all trash. You can hear everybody anyway. Not, not really important, but I got a family of five because I got a newborn in a two bedroom, tiny apartment. My business starts in 45 days. The season kicks up again. And luckily I'm under contract on this house that I remodeled. So I did all this work, remodeled this house. And what we went under contract for, I just worked for free on that house for the last year. And it turned out beautiful. And I was supposed to live there. And I did it to my wife's standards and I had to let it go. I mean, it was like, just, <clears throat> I don't like the city. So I have to move back to the city and we have to buy a house. So in the meantime, I've got a 30 day post occupancy and there's nothing in inventory. And I've got, you know, a safe and four wheelers and a boat and tools, a lot of tools. Like I've got a lot of stuff that I've accumulated because I use a lot of it. Hunting gear. I mean, I have a, I have a full 24 by 32 garage or however big it is loaded to the tilt with my stuff. And if I don't roll into a house before the post occupancy is up, I got to move twice. So there's all these like stresses that are going on. Plus I have to go back to court for my son because I am not pleased with the schedule I have. And the only reason that I, to, to try and make my case to get the kind of time I'm looking for, I have to be within a certain distance, which really limits what we can get because we're looking at minimum like $700,000 for a house. It's insane. And that's at like six and a half percent of a loan rate. So just do the math. It's like four grand a month, which is extremely razor thin. You know, like it's not good. I only work seven months out of the year. I have to make everything I need in seven months. And my hips busted, my knees busted, my foot's busted. And I am this owner operator of my business running a sprinkler business. So I'm broken down. I'm stressed out to the max. I got a newborn who's cluster feeding all night long and my wife can't sleep. We're not sure if we can even find a place that's going to work for us. Most of the stuff we looked at is awful. And I still have to worry about going back to court and run my business and hope to God that I'm able to undo all the financial damage that I just accumulated by not making the best decision overall, even though at the time I thought it was the best decision for my family. So that's a long list of crap. And it's, it might not sound like a lot. I mean, I'm responsible for my family. Like my wife and I are a team, 
My job as a dad is to provide and protect for my family and set them up in the best possible scenario. And right now I've got two kids sharing bedrooms and it's not fair to them. And it makes me really upset because it was supposed to be temporary and here we are still. So now I have to move back to the city to a place I don't want to be to run a business I don't want to run because my family needs me to do that. And all the while I have to stay sober. But the beauty of all of this is, folks, is that when you're sober, all that crap and stress, like when you're not settled, it's actually significantly easier to get through it. I mean, I'm battling pretty massive depression right now, but the reason I'm getting through it so well is because I'm sober. And it's just really beneficial for you to walk through life with a clear mind because all of the troubles and stresses that you deal with, as much as they'll weigh you down, like they're weighing me down right now. And it really does feel like there's no end in sight and that nothing's going to work out, right? But there are some things that are in the mix that are working on some other stuff. I'll fill you guys in. It's really cool. That gives me a little light at the end of the tunnel. But <clears throat> the the beauty of breaking free from that slavery to alcohol is that it really doesn't matter what life throws at you. You're going to find a way to come out on top or at least navigate through those awful choppy waters, if you will, much better and get to where you need to go with way less troubles in your way because you can handle them with a clear mind. So it's kind of a long video. It's maybe a little too personal, but I just want to let you guys know, like there's a lot on my plate right now. And if I wanted to make excuses, I'd have every excuse in the book to go back to drinking, but I don't want to, and I don't have to, and I'm not going to, and neither do you. You don't have to do it. You don't need to make excuses. Just push forward, guys. Thanks for tuning in.